Right on the map, intensifying a bit, getting darker. That means it's getting hotter. 98 in Nashville Saturday. Here's Sunday, mid to upper 90s throughout the deep south. It is going to be hot. And right now, we are keeping our countdown going of the top five videos of the day with a look and a listen at this. You don't always see hail this size in California. You can see it bouncing around as well near Nuevo, near the town of Nuevo here, seeing quite a bit of hail coming down. Again, you can hear it, hear it in a big way. Meanwhile, we're keeping an eye on what could be, could be the next named storm in the Atlantic. Storm tracker Jim Cantori is gonna break down the latest on Invest 96L. At Panera Bread, we fill our freshly baked flatbread with bold, unflat flavors. Like taste inspired by the freshness of the Mediterranean. So you always get flavor that's anything but flat. New flatbread sandwiches. Try one today. It's a great day to try Panera Bread's Fuji Apple Chicken Salad. Oh no. Can you fix it, Dad? Yeah, I can fix that. <laughs> I wanted a car that could handle anything. I fixed it! That's why I got a Subaru Legacy. Symmetrical all-wheel drive plus 36 MPG. I gotta break more toys. Go! Introducing the all-new Subaru Legacy. It's not just a sedan, it's a Subaru. I am a painter, and Scotch Blue is my tape. I am a painter, and Scotch Blue is my tape. Pro painters count on Scotch Blue. Now with advanced edge lock paint line protector for even sharper paint lines. I am a painter, and Scotch Blue is my tape. Scotch Blue Painter Stamp. for Labor Day deals. Get 10 to 30% off major appliances $3.99 or more at Lowe's. Our oath isn't an empty gesture. It's the heart and soul of Terminex Nation. The Terminex Ultimate Protection Guarantee. 100% satisfaction or your money back. Not here. Not now. Not in my house. Terminex. Suit up and save at Men's Warehouse. Brand name suits from Jones, New York, Perry Ellis, and Pronto Womo now on sale for $199.99. And buy one, get one free on almost everything else in the store. Now through August 24th at Men's Warehouse. The NFL has agreed to a settlement benefiting retired players, their families, and representatives relating to brain injuries. If approved, the multi-million dollar settlement will provide compensation, baseline medical exams, and other benefits. Valid claims for conditions such as ALS, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, dementia, and other diagnoses are guaranteed to be paid during the 65-year settlement. If you did not receive an information package, call 855-887-3485 or go to nflconcussionsettlement.com. Sunday night at 10. The Weather Channel's taking three new fat guys into the weather. Game on. For a real taste of the wilderness. That's a very interesting flavor. Mm -hmm. Dang, listen to those coyotes. It means... Sandals is all about love. We love to give you more than you expect. And it's all included all the time. gives you more quality inclusions than any other resorts on the planet. Save up to 65%. Call 1-800-SANDALS. Bouncing Barnacles. Patrick from Nickelodeon's SpongeBob SquarePants is coming to your town. Spend a day with everyone's favorite starfish from Bikini Bottom. You can dance and take pictures or just give Patrick a hug. Patrick from SpongeBob SquarePants is coming for a visit and he can't wait to meet you. Nickelodeon's Patrick Starr will be appearing at the Our Kids World Family Fun Fest on Saturday, August 23rd and Sunday, August 24th. All items are shipped to you for just $2 flat. NoMoreRack.com. Everything you love for less. Sunday night, the Weather Channel asks, so you think you'd survive raging rapids? Oh! So you think you'd survive Sunday night at 9 on the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 88 degrees under mostly cloudy skies.
Tonight, mostly clear, low 78. Winds southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Friday, sunshine and clouds mixed. A stray afternoon or evening thunderstorm is possible. High 89. Here's our seven day outlook. And welcome back to the lab here on the Weather Channel. It's 20 past the hour time for the tropical update. We're going to go to Storm Tracker Jim Cantori right now. And Jim, we asked people if they wanted to uh, ask us questions. We said, if you want to ask us a question, we'll try to answer some of those for you. And uh, Soren is asking, uh, why is it called 96L? It doesn't have a name yet. It's not officially a storm yet. Why 96L? Right. Uh, we use invest numbers. For some reason, they chose the 90s. investigation. Investigation, yeah. right? This is this is an area we want to investigate. And uh, in the Atlantic, we go anywhere from 92 to 98. And L is the Atlantic. In the Eastern Pacific, you'll see I think anywhere from 90 to 98. It would be invest 90E or 91E. Um, if it's central, you'll get a C invest. 90C. So those are just okay. numbers that are used to initiate the invest because oftentimes you can have several areas of interest out there uh, that are, you know, used and models are run on them, but they may not have a name. So you got to give them something first. It's kind of a pre name, okay. if you will. Right. All right. Uh, so right now, all we have is 96. And, and it would be L. Crystal Ball if it does get in. Right. So yeah. now, Invest 96L would go from Invest 96L to Crystal Ball. Yeah. No, maybe depression first, then uh, Cristobal. But I think with what they found today, they just need a little bit more evidence to give this thing a name, and they probably will go right to that. But uh, that's either here or there. So, so they, these become invests, and we can have numbers, of, you know, several of them out there at once. You just have to give them numbers versus names before they garner that name. To get that tropical storm name, remember, you have to have winds at 39 miles per hour uh, or greater to have it as a TS. All right, so here's uh, also what the Hurricane Center does. They take the, the probabilities of this developing somewhere in this hash area, uh, and go out five days, so go out 120 hours. You can see what happens here after about uh, day three. It gets a little sketchy as to where it may go and certainly where it may develop, but the probability throughout the entire area over the next 120 hours is 70%. And that's pretty doggone high. So a pretty high confidence in this very large gyre uh, that is going to develop. Now, we told you today the hurricane hunters went out there and they find a very poorly defined center, which I'm still going to try and find it here, uh, even at this late hour, right there as the sun goes down, um, with some tropical storm force winds on the northeast side. All right, so uh, there's, there's enough there to say, hey, we've got something that's close, but not quite there yet. Notice the shower and thunderstorm activity on the northeast side and the southeast side. So if you're living in, let's say, uh, Anguilla or even into Puerto Rico, you have to go through all of this before it clears out. And frankly, that's going to take a couple of days. All right, so it's going to be unsettled. We may have some flash flooding uh, even over the Dominican Republic as well. That is a huge concern. And right now, our number one concern, regardless of strength, we know that there's a flash flood threat. So where is this going to go in time? This is where it gets a little bit tricky. This is uh, where I just essentially use the American model and the ensembles combined together because this pretty, gives, pretty much gives a good representation of what everybody and everything is thinking. So, you know, right in through here, again, day two, this is almost like that cone, uh, Chris, that we showed you right in through here. Then it kind of widens out there. We expect the system to slow down somewhere in here. All right. Uh, I don't know how intense it's going to be at that point. I think the more intense storm would tend to curve or be out to the right of this suite. The lesser intense or the weaker storm would tend to stay down to the south, which is, uh, again, a lot of you look at these models and you say, well, none of them have Florida in there. But if this remains a weak system and it's going to be missed by that trough, Florida is easily in play. And we have to watch out because storms can really intensify uh, even as far east as 300 miles away from Florida. So that's something we have to watch. Florida's not out of the woods. All right, yeah, Jim, we're not done with this yet because like getting a lot of questions about where is this going to go? What city is impacted? Tough question to, to answer. Right, but we're going yeah. to go in depth on that and talk about the possibilities okay. coming up. But right now, though, we're getting back to our top five and a look at number three. And how about this in Des Moines? Uh, this a view from around the state capitol, just in front of the state capitol, looking off toward downtown. Look at this. The tallest building there, the 801 Grand Building in Des Moines, getting struck right on the top. An amazing scene. We're going to be right back 
here on Weather Center Live from the lab. I always dreamed of coming here. When my asthma symptoms returned, my doctor prescribed Dulera to help prevent them. Dulera is for patients 12 and older whose asthma is not well controlled on a long-term asthma control medicine, like an inhaled corticosteroid. Dulera will not replace a rescue inhaler for sudden symptoms. A six-month clinical study has shown Dulera helps significantly improve lung function. Dulera contains formoterol, which increases the risk of death from asthma problems and may increase the risk of hospitalization in children and adolescents. Dulera is not for people whose asthma is well controlled with a long-term asthma control medicine, like an inhaled corticosteroid. Once your asthma is well controlled, your doctor will decide if you can stop Dulera and prescribe a different asthma control medicine, like an inhaled corticosteroid. Do not take Dulera more than prescribed. See your doctor if your asthma does not improve or gets worse. Ask your doctor about Dulera. Let's try on a new coat, one that covers better, lasts longer, and protects us from the elements, inside and out. Let's go to the place with the best paint, take it home for less, then rock and roll. Let's do the one thing that changes everything. Let's do this. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Right now, Bear Premium Plus paint with an easy clean finish, just $23.96 a gallon. for great rides. Geico Motorcycle. See how much you could save. Want proof that Pantene makes your hair healthier all the way to the end? Put Pantene to the test. Watch. When hair loses protein, it splits and fails the needle test. But with Pantene, the advanced Pro-V formula helps prevent protein loss and stops split ends before they start. So your hair passes the test with ease. Put Pantene to the test. For hair so healthy, you shine. How about over there? What does it mean to have an unlimited mileage warranty on a certified pre-owned Mercedes-Benz? What does it mean to drive as far as you want for up to three years and be covered? It means your odometer is there to record the memories. During the Mercedes-Benz Certified Pre-Owned Sales event, now through September 2nd, you'll get complimentary prepaid maintenance and may qualify for a two-month payment credit. Only at your authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer. Enjoy carefree fun with flea and tick solutions just like your vet carries and save up to $15 on select flea and tick products at PetSmart. Sunday night at 10. The Weather Channel's taking three new fat guys into the weather. Game on. For a real taste of the wilderness. That's a very interesting flavor. Mm -hmm. Dang, listen to those coyotes. It means they've just killed something. They stay away from the fire, right? Most of the time. Fat Guys in the Woods. Catch an all-new episode Sunday night at 10 on the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 88 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Tonight, mostly clear, low 78. Winds southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Friday, sunshine and clouds mixed. A stray afternoon or evening thunderstorm is possible. High 89. Here's our seven day outlook. Mondays, only the Weather Channel takes you this far inside a hurricane. Hurricane 360, Mondays at 9, only on the Weather Channel. 
Well, the Weather Channel is Hurricane Central, and this is what we are keeping a very close eye on. A lot of interest about this system in the Atlantic. We are here to focus on the science, so you know exactly what this infest, 96L, has the potential to do and the possibilities of where it could go. It's bottom of the hour right now, Weather Center Live. We are coming to you from the lab here at the Weather Channel. I'm Chris Warren with Storm Tracker Jim Cantori. And Jim, a lot of interest in this and for good reason. Yeah, I mean, it's already impacting the islands. We know there's a flood threat there, regardless of how strong it's going to be. But there's so many questions on intensity and steering going out probably from about 60 hours into the next 120 that, uh, you know, this could certainly pose a threat to, uh, you know, U.S. landmass. And a lot of people want to know about right. that. And we are going to tackle that, the mm -hmm. different possibilities, the different cities that do need to be on alert for the potential, potential now uh, for something heading our way. But right now, let's take a look at the tropics at a whole. Our senior hurricane specialist, Brian North across taking a look at the next two weeks in the tropics. As we look ahead to the next two weeks in the tropics, we look at a lot of factors in the atmosphere all around the Earth. One of them, of course, is how dry is the air over the tropics. Another one is how strong is the pressure. Is it high? Well, that would be unfavorable for low pressure systems to develop. If it were low, that would be more favorable. Another are pulses that run around the atmosphere around the equator. One of them is called the MJO. That's the Madden-Julian Oscillation is the technical name. Another one is called the Kelvin Wave. They both come around the equator of the Earth, and when they go by, they can either enhance or suppress tropical development. So we try and track these. Sometimes it's tricky to do it, but we try and keep track of where these pulses are and when they're going to come over areas that are favored for tropical development. So that's what we're looking at here. And right now in the tropics, we have this generally favorable regime over the tropical Atlantic into the Caribbean and up into the Gulf. And indeed, we've seen some enhanced tropical development as a result of that. As we look ahead here now the next couple of weeks, we see a little more favorable regime that's moving out of the Pacific where it has been spectacularly busy over toward the Gulf and the Caribbean. Of course, we're heading to the peak of the hurricane season, so we expect more development, but it looks like the atmosphere is going to support it. In terms of upper level winds, generally favorable over the Gulf, at least for part of the next two weeks, generally unfavorable over the eastern Atlantic. So we're generally going to look here closer to the Caribbean islands, especially here when we get into September. Next week, the Gulf and the area around Florida looks the most favorable. So when we boil all this down, we're thinking next week, slightly favorable, especially in the Gulf of Mexico, and then on into September, somewhat favorable in the central Atlantic. Overall, the Atlantic does not look super favorable, but a few things are coming together, we think, that will enhance tropical development. Okay, that's it. Back to you. All right, and we're with Storm Tracker Jim Cantori in the lab. And what's your reaction to that, Jim? What stands out in your mind when you hear Brian talking about that? Well, talking about where conditions are favorable for development off of uh, Florida. I mean, you know, that's where this system is going to be, 96 uh, L. Right. somewhere east of Florida or potentially close to Florida uh, as we get into early next week. So given the fact that conditions will be favorable for development, that may enhance things, uh, we think, certainly as the system comes that way. Now, whether it curves or stays straight into Florida, there's the million dollar question. And there's a couple of things here. A couple of people on Twitter asking, uh, Matt wants to know, is this possibly, could this be like a Sandy? Could it do a Sandy turn? That's one question. Why are you going to go through here yeah. and take a look? And Matthew, someone else, wants to know uh, about northeastern Pennsylvania. Now, these are very specific right. and, and you know what, guys? I'm, I'm going to be questions. honest with you. And, and those are great questions. And I know, uh, I want to know, too. I wanna, right. And I wish I could right. tell you. But 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 it, we just can't get down to that detail. There's so many possibilities. And, and if you... So so many if you are seeing maps or different solutions on Twitter or on social media saying this is where it's going, that's right. possibly just one out of many solutions. And that could have been from two days ago, could have been from today, could have been yesterday. But there's a lot of possibilities right now. Like I told you when I first met you when you walked in today, the only thing I would almost want to say is it seems much less likely, not zero, all right? less likely that this is a Gulf of Mexico player from, what, from right. what we see in where it's tracking and what it's going to do. That's not saying it's zero. That's based right? on the best science of what we know That's right now. That's what we know right now and what I see changing from yesterday and today. Okay. All right. Now it may flip back tomorrow, so it's not zero. All right, let's talk about what we got here uh, because the hurricane hunters were out here today. They found a very poorly defined center. They also found tropical storm force winds on the northeast side of this. The problem is, Chris, I mean, look, look at what we've got here. All right, we've got unsettled weather already 
That's not the one I wanted. That's the one I want. We've got unsettled weather already in through here, all the way from uh, St. Croix and the Virgin Islands, all the way down to the east of the island. So that said, uh, unfortunately, that means we're going to have a lot of unsettled weather here continuing uh, for the next several days. So this is the 2 o'clock update. In about a half hour or less, we're going to get a new map from the Hurricane Center in terms of where are they looking at that 70%, if they keep it at 70%, they may increase it, all right? They may increase the short-term value of 48 hours. Where are they gonna put this 120 hour hashtag? Is it gonna be loaded more here, loaded more here, or look the same? Is it gonna bring more of Florida into play? That's gonna be interesting. I wanna, I wanna see certainly what, what they're thinking in time, and that's you know based off of the new models and, and their confidence in such. So here's, again, the two o'clock, 70% uh, chance, 40 miles per hour, Right now with the winds, 1,009 millibars. So we're all, you know, we've got the winds of the tropical storm force. We just don't have the structure that says, hey, we got to clearly define the level center that we can call, uh, you know, a, a tropical storm. But here it is. Here's where they found that center today. Northeast winds, uh, again, at tropical storm force on the northeast side of it. It's not too far off. We're not too far from getting a tropical storm in through here, and we certainly think the chances are uh, that this thing will continue to produce a lot of unsettled weather into Anguilla, into Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands. And then, as I said, you've got this south side and southeast side that still has to come up through here. So it's kind of, notice how it's elongated a little bit to the northwest? Uh, it's almost giving us a little hint at which way it wants to go. Here's the current radar, and look at this. We've already got precipitation coming into the Dominican right. from this, all right? And it stretches out all the way through the islands in three years. So some of this is gonna be very beneficial rainfall. But I think after a couple of days of this, and if we start getting better banding and intensification, we're gonna have some flood problems. And that's why Puerto Rico's issued a flash flood uh, warning or watch, I should say, for, for the islands. All right, let's take a look at uh, what we think is happening here on the water vapor. It looks like some outflow channels here, so we don't have any shear. Pretty strong shear right here, but it's not with the system. And we don't know if we're going to get into that yet. Uh, the system is moving pretty quickly off to the northwest at 20 miles per hour. Here is what I just showed you on the water vapor. That unfavorable part is north and west of the invest area. So it's not impacting it right now, uh, nor do we think it's going to. We think all of this is just going to continue to move on off toward the west as we go on in time. So let's look at the American model. And, and I want to take this because I like this, the general solution that it, it kind of encompasses everything. This is what we call the ensemble products. They take the same model. They tweak different little things in the models and you wind up you know with, with different paths but this is pretty much what everything is saying this west northwest track through about saturday then after that system slows it gets very very uncertain uh, as to uh, what is going to be happening in through here and this is where the problems lie uh, is this a weak system it would maybe tend to stay on this southern track is it a stronger system is it going to start to curve a little bit more you know that that's really the big question in through here and then as that gentleman was saying in new jersey does this pull a sandy where it comes back toward the united states that's absolutely a possibility because trough goes by, misses picking up the entire system because it's weak, and then the high builds to the north and shifts it off to the west. That's absolutely a possibility and something we're watching right, right now. But it's not the forecast at this point by, forecast, by any means. It's one of many, many possibilities. possibilities. It's, not, it's not out of the realm at this point. You got it. All right, Jim, thank you very much. Jim, take a look at this. The number two video of the day. This is time lapse of storms moving through Iowa. And look at this. Wow, that is about as we put this into motion. I have ever seen. Isn't that right something there. else? You see the. Look at that. Dillingham, you got to be loving this too. You're, you're, you love the good shelfie. Look at this. Boom. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. That's just incredible. So, you know, you've got all this rain cooled air coming down, Chris, just shoving that cloud structure right at you. Uh, just fantastic. We're, we're actually going to we're, we're going to slow this down coming up in just a few minutes to take a closer look at that. But right now we are looking at where there are some storms That's right fantastic. now around Baltimore. Severe thunderstorm warning just to the north. We'll be back right back live from the lab. Currently in our area, 87 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Tonight, mostly clear, low 78. Winds southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour.
Friday, sunshine and clouds mixed. A stray afternoon or evening thunderstorm is possible. High 89. Here's our seven-day outlook. deals. Get 10 to $40 off our best paints and stains at Lowe's. I'm Mona. I'm Beth. And we raced around the world on a reality show. You may know us. We were the, the roller, roller derby, derby moms. moms. And our families are super competitive. So when we heard Walmart's clothes are better than ever, we had to put them to the test. I love that the clothes can stand up to the kids. And this Avia line is awesome. We're pretty tough. And these clothes are really keeping up with us. Fit. Style. Performance. Discover the look of quality backed by our satisfaction guarantee. Available at Walmart and Walmart.com. Save money, live better. Walmart. These cheesy bread dogs, the cheese is baked right into the bun. It's what's on the outside that counts? Huh. Prove that. Oh, uh... Duh, 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 duh. Count on the cheesy goodness of the new cheesy bread dogs. This is how you sonic. Did you know... Your eyes can lose vital nutrients as you age. That's why there's Occuvite, to help replenish key eye nutrients. Occuvite has a unique formula not found in your multivitamin to help protect your eye health. Occuvite, help protect your eye health. Hey, pal. You ready? Can you pick me up at 630? Ah. I'm here, I'm here. Too late. I'll go for five minutes. I'm good. It may be quite a while before he's ready, but our Subaru Legacy will be waiting for him. The longest lasting midsize sedan in its class. Introducing the all new Subaru Legacy. It's not just a sedan, it's a Subaru. Has Rover gone all over and left your lawn with bald spots? Do you have high traffic areas or shady areas that look like this? It's time to fix it fast with new Grassology. The all new, all natural grass seed that turns problem areas into lush green grass, quick and easy. Just sprinkle the amazing Grassology seeds and you'll be amazed at how fast those ugly patches and worn areas fill in with gorgeous green barefoot soft grass. The secrets in the seed blend. The scientists and lawn experts at Grassology have taken 10 years to blend the best seeds for the best grass. Grassology grows smart, fast, is hardy and easy to maintain. It grows practically anywhere, even on slopes and steep areas. Grassology's roots grow four times longer, reaching deep down water and nutrient sources combined with thick, gorgeous green blades that grow to the perfect dwarf height. Grassology is the science of grass, perfected, which also means less mowing and practically no watering or fertilizing. It's time to get rid of those bald spots and bad patches for good with Grassology. You can even make over your entire lawn. Simply spread Grassology over your existing lawn and watch it transform into a lush, plush, picture-perfect landscape. If your bald spots aren't gone and your lawn isn't thicker, fuller, and greener in 60 days, we'll give you your money back. Order now and get one pound of Grassology Enough for 250 square feet of gorgeous, barefoot soft lawn for just $14.99. But if you call right now, you can double the order to two pounds. That's more than 500 square feet. Plus, you can also get a 25-foot pocket hose ultra. The number one expandable garden hose in the world is now three times stronger. Grassology for $14.99. Call now. Grassology by Pearl's Premium. Call 1-800-731-8558, and today you can get a special Grassology double offer and the Pocket Hose Ultra. So call 1-800-731-8558. That's 1-800-731-8558. Call now. Right now, it's almost time for the number one video of the day. We're also going to have an update on 96L in a moment. But first, here's a look back at numbers five through two. Number five, storm cloud with some lightning in Nebraska. Four, hail, which you don't see all that often in California. They do occasionally, but some good size hail right here. Number three, lightning. Beautiful shot here in Des Moines, Iowa. And number two, storm clouds move into Iowa. And right now, Storm Tracker Jim Cantori, meteorologist Nick Walker here to take a look at some of those videos. And guys, what stands out five to two? What stands out to you? Two great videos there in Iowa, but one really takes the cake. Yeah, and something better be awfully good to top that <laughs> Iowa video. That's all I'm going to say for the number one spot. I don't know who's got their, their hands in this thing. Uh, but, you know, this is the time of the year, too. We, 
we see these storms move and evolve much slower than in the spring, Chris. Right. So you can really appreciate the structure of what, what's happening in these storms. And this is uh, about as gorgeous a shelf cloud as I've ever seen here. And we slowed it down. This is past, I think, the shelf cloud. And Nick, you were pointing this out earlier. There's yeah, so a wall cloud the and a yeah. If you look, real this has oh, there's the this, wall this cloud. Has, right? oh, yeah, there's a wall oh, cloud. Yeah. And look real closely. So now we replayed. We've slowed it can, down a little bit. Can you see it? There, so, there's so a little. Think of a comma, everybody. There's the comma, and Nick's going to point out, you know, where that wall cloud is, where the comma head is. All right. Right. And, and there's a funnel cloud somewhere in here. It may be obstructed it by the, by the underneath there. I think I think it's going to be. But we saw. We were looking at this right. earlier, Chris. We saw a little funnel cloud coming. I think it's right there. Is that it? Right underneath the number two. Oh, there we go. There we go. Right there. Real closely, coming, right? It, it doesn't last right very long. Wall cloud, oh, right, there, right there, right there, right there. Right there. Yeah. Do you see it? This is why they call this the Geek Central right here. <laughs> you see, did you see what just went on there? That, that's about right. as good as it gets, ladies and gentlemen. That, there, nobody practiced that. We just absolutely were just geeking out of that video. That was awesome. Uh, this is a video they ought to use in, right. in, in any college meteorology class. I mean, it's, yeah, got, it's, it's got it all. It is. It's a textbook uh, situation here. I can't wait to see number one. This better be good, Warren. <laughs> all right. all I, I didn't choose this, That's Jim. all I want to say. Right I didn't now. choose this. I mean, how are you going to top is, that? This is going back to flooding and showing the, the power of these flash floods that we saw in okay. Arizona earlier in the week. So let's take a look at number one. New River, Arizona hit so hard by the flash flooding. And you have this trailer coming down. First, look at this river. It's not just that it's big and deep. It's fast. Yeah. This is a fast move. Moving river. This is a trailer. It is heading right for the bridge. Here it comes. And it's thick. Oh, oh wow. That's so Holy cow. <laughs> Holy cow, right. So this is what happens after the weather. Number two is a gorgeous display of weather. And this is what Mother Nature can do after some big storms Look drop a lot of water. Debris. Look at how thick that is. I mean, that's, this is it. that's just a disaster right there. Uh, yeah. Hear the guy say, this is it. And this is probably one of those rivers that, uh, you know, is just a little bathroom most yeah. of the time. If or anything. Dry. Or dry, yeah. Or dry, yeah. Cow. So what do you think, Jim? Uh, that's I, still number one? Or do you like number two? That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> right. that's, pretty, that's pretty good. <laughs> All right. But, you know, structure that doesn't hurt anybody that looks at, you know, I, that's what my favorite stuff. Yeah. But I like yeah. it. That was... Good, good videos all the way around. Showing all right, the power of Mother Nature. Good so, Nick, do you want to do the seven-day forecast? I'm going to look at the video some more. Uh, well, we got to do the seven-day forecast. <laughs> okay. We'll look at the video after. Okay, right, we'll, we we'll, do that, we'll do that later. <laughs> okay, let's talk a little bit about what's coming up in the next seven days. We do have more storms, unfortunately, coming into the northeast, back toward the, uh, you know, the Midwest. Drier here around the southeast, at least temporarily, but boy, oh boy, we're going to continue to see that warmth. And severe weather possibilities in the central plains tomorrow. That moves a little farther toward the east. Omaha. Des Moines, Sioux Falls, you all need to be on your guard here. And yeah, the Mid-Atlantic too. We've got more storms moving your way. Look at the southeast by the time we get into Sunday. All these thunderstorms coming up into play. The Chastain Amphitheater, got a big concert there in Atlanta. Chicago and REO Speedwagon. Nice. Should be a good show, <laughs> good uh, but you know, you may have to take your umbrella, but it will not be another rainy day in New York City. All right, we got more of that dry weather coming into the Northeast by the time we get into the weekend. So that's looking a whole lot better and a little cooler too for many of us, but warming up ahead of the next system. As this system moves through the plains, the Midwest, we'll see more of that wet weather. Back toward the West, hey, we're gonna be pretty dry all the way through the period here and looking fine here, even in areas that have been, you know, pretty flooded here today down in Southern California, there in the deserts. More of this wet weather coming up into the plains and into the Midwest by Wednesday. We dry it out, cool it down a little bit there around the South and really cool it down here around the Northern Plains, back behind that next system as we see more rain, yeah, into the Northeast. Chris? All right, Nick, thank you very much. We are seeing something right now in the Atlantic. We're taking a look at 96L next. Behold a beauty revolution. Radiance. The new paint studio at 8. Oh, snap. Featuring the number one rated label in semi-gloss paint, Clark & Kensington. That's longhand for awesome. Ace is a place to help the hardware folks. Helpful is beautiful. Suit up and save at Men's Warehouse. Brand name suits from Jones, New York, Perry Ellis, and Pronto Womo now on sale for $199.99. And buy one, get one free on almost everything else in the store. Now through August 24th at Men's Warehouse. I'm Creek Stewart, Weather Channel survival expert. Every Sunday night, we're taking three regular guys deep into the woods. Are you serious? Where we'll teach them not just to survive, so make fire, but how to truly live. Look at this caveman. 
Show yourself what you're made of on Weather Channel Survival Sundays. At 9, it's So You Think You'd Survive. Then at 10, Fat Guys in the Woods. Every Sunday night on the Weather Channel. Are you ready? Off the couch, into the weather. Currently in our area, 87 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Tonight, mostly clear, low 78. Winds southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Friday, sunshine and clouds mixed. A stray afternoon or evening thunderstorm is possible. High, 89. Here's our seven-day outlook. West didn't end where Columbus landed. Not on the banks of the Mississippi, or even the coast of California. The new Ram 1500 Eco Diesel, with 9,200 pounds of towing and 28 highway miles per gallon. West will never end. Guts, glory, Ram. Covert Ops, Double Agent, Spy Thriller, you don't know ARP. Thanks to the AARP Tech Program, this guy is spying on his new grandson. AARP Tech gets people better connected to technology to better connect with each other with social media, digital devices, and apps. If you don't think hashtag love dad when you... The Indian River Lagoon is 156 miles long, representing recreation, fishing, and nearly 20,000 Florida jobs. Last summer, because of dumping in Lake Okeechobee, the lagoon turned green and murky. I call it a disaster. So we pull together to stop the dumping with record funding that will protect this vital resource and our jobs. Joe Negron had it in his heart to do what's right for this lagoon. It's our future. Joe Negron coming through for us. Napleton Nissan is flexible. That's right, for a limited time, Napleton Nissan's offering a flex pay option. For a limited time only, pay $69.88 for a brand new 2014 Nissan Altima. Or pay only $11,988 for a brand new 2014 Nissan Maxima. Get flex pay pricing and a huge selection of Nissans at Napleton Nissan. Located at the corner of Blue Heron Boulevard and I-95 in Riviera Beach. Napleton, second to none since 1931. For $19 and Ray-Ban sunglasses for just $85. Sunday night, the Weather Channel asks, so you think you'd survive raging rapids? Oh so you think you'd survive Sunday night at 9 on the Weather Channel. 50 past the hour here in the lab at the Weather Channel, and it is time for the tropical update. Storm tracker Jim Cantori is here. The latest information on 96L is in from the National Hurricane Center. And Jim, what has changed, if anything? Uh, there's a higher confidence of this developing, both in 48 hours and also 120 hours. So, so more likely that, to get a name right. storm. I, I mean, we're very close to that now from right. what the hurricane hunters found out today, to be honest with you. Uh, let's give you an overall here, big picture, because we don't want to forget about anybody. There's Karina still going on here. Uh, again, not a threat to land. Uh, Lowell is interesting. I'm almost wondering if we have another annular hurricane on our hands. And Invest 92L is forecast to develop, but everybody's pretty much uh, focused on uh, 96L, not surprisingly here. But here is Lowell, which did become a hurricane today, by the way. 31.1 north, uh, 122.3 west, about 850 miles to the western tip of uh, Baja here. Winds are at 75 miles per hour and it is heading into cooler water. And again, remember, if this is going to be annular, it has a chance of surviving a little bit longer uh, in that cooler water as we have found statistically. Big eyes and a better uh, chance of uh, surviving, if you will, under uh, cooler water conditions. But already, Chris, it's had an indirect impact on the United States. Here's Lowell here and its moisture source getting pulled across Baja up across northern Mexico into Arizona and back into this upper low where showers and thunderstorms develop in uh, Matt Crowther told me earlier Imperial California uh, over half their annual rainfall in about one hour.
<laughs> that's amazing. So that's pretty much how Lowell has helped out that situation in adding some high-level moisture. All right, here's the updated five... Uh, or five day mesh, if you will, uh, from the Hurricane Center. And you can see where they're looking at this thing uh, possibly developing. This has not changed all that much at all from what we saw at 2 p.m. Not surprisingly, the model guidance was very similar. The only thing that was different was what's going on longer term uh, toward the day four or five period here. Uh, short term, everybody is pretty much in agreement. And the atmosphere even giving us a little hint, Chris, here as to where this may go. You see, that's kind of elongated off to the northeast. Uh, or northwest into the southeast like that. You know, the, the propensity is to get pulled in that direction. Yeah, and it looks it's like it's pushing that way. Yeah, ahead it's, of it. yeah. It's, it's almost a little hint as to work on. And that makes sense. you got a subtropical ridge here. Everything's sliding around the west side of that. All right, and that's what's going on. And it's moving in a northwest direction pretty quickly, too. So there's that 80% over the next 122 hours. It's up to 60 uh, over the next 48 hours, not surprisingly at all. It's very close, uh, you know, with uh, winds at 40 miles per hour. They just don't have the other evidence, the, the you know, thunderstorms around the center to say, hey, we've just got a poorly defined center here. We don't have a very well-developed one. And the pressures are very high. I mean, you, you've almost got the average pressure that you find in the tropics with this system here. And you're going to need a lower pressure to right. get it going. The lower and get the it pressure, spinning. the more air comes in toward that lower pressure. Yeah. So as you look at this, I mean, this is a large system, taking up a, a good bit of real estate. It's just a little bit more elongated today uh, than what we saw it certainly in the past. Let's take a look at where we think the center is, even though the sun has uh, gone down a little bit. Looks like it's about right here, Chris, moving off to the west-northwest. So even though the center's out here and convectionless, we've already got these bands of showers and storms into the Virgin Islands, into Puerto Rico as well, even all the way out to uh, Hispaniola, for that matter. There's already some weather, uh, wet weather out there. So a couple of days of this, and we have a flood threat, uh, we think, for Puerto Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands as well. Some of this is going to be very, very heavy. Locally, a foot of rain. Of course, the mountains uh, on the interior, first with the bands coming in from the northeast for Puerto Rico. Then once the storm, uh, or whatever it is at this point, comes uh, to the north and west, you'll get the bands coming in from uh, the south and, uh, and east. And uh, as they come in, uh, we will see, of course, heavier rain on the southern side of the mountains there. So either way, we think those mountains that are facing east-west are going to get it. All right. Where does this thing go 48 hours, 60 hours? First of all, none of the intensity models develop this past the tropical storm strength for 60 hours. Okay, so that's something. All right, so yeah. that, that is something, actually. Yeah. Um, but they all move it, as you can see, let's use the let's see, red, white, right in through here. They move it through the Virgin Islands north of Puerto Rico. And we'll see how, you know, obviously the track right over Hispaniola means this thing's going to really get wrecked. All right. I mean, regardless, I mean, that's really going to ruin whatever center there is. So that's something to watch for. If it stays just to the north here, that means it won't touch those mountains and, and potentially be as impacted. So I think a stronger system stays north and actually curls a little bit if it starts to develop. Uh, a southern system stays very, very weak and really has a time struggling. But that doesn't mean that if it's in this position at some point down the road, let's say late weekend, early next week, uh, we don't have something that could still intensify. So, you know, all bets, uh, you know, certainly are still on at this point. So here comes this trough coming through. Will it pick this thing up and bodily pull it out? Maybe not. If the trough bypasses us by the time we get into early next week, there's a chance that it comes north out of the Bahamas or wherever it is, turns back toward the states, and then heads out. So this is all the GFS model ensemble suite and you know they just tweak a few things in this here's the main gfs run the operational as we like to call it right in through here which actually takes this southern track even though right now it's actually staying on a more northwestern track a lot of unanswered questions here with this one chris and we're going to be here with you at the weather channel to walk you through it each step of the way coming up next a look at the areas we're watching for storms tonight Currently in our area, 87 degrees, under mostly cloudy skies. Tonight, mostly clear, low 78. Winds southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Friday, sunshine and clouds mixed. A stray afternoon or evening thunderstorm is possible. High 89. 
Here's our seven-day outlook. I'm Nick Walker. We're watching numerous storms tonight among those here around the Mid-Atlantic as warnings are up for portions of Baltimore County here. Thunderstorms coming into the area over the next several minutes. Baltimore under one of those warnings here. Another warnings as Pennsylvania. Southern New York into New Jersey. You need to be on your guard. Sussex County under a warning right now. We've had very gusty winds. Lots of trees down here around the Southern New York area. There's New York City. You got to be watching these thunderstorms. They could make their way toward you here in the next hour or so. We'll be watching also this line of thunderstorms coming down south from Virginia into North Carolina. A little lone thunderstorm in North Carolina already under a warning. And a severe thunderstorm watch goes until midnight tonight. Thunderstorms have already wreaked havoc here with gusty winds in portions of Indiana. We'll watch more of that and also watching the central plains down into the Texas panhandle. Hail damaging wind threats there. Big time flood threat in Southern California. Dangerous day ahead. Dire warnings. Get out of the way of this thing. Deadly winds. A dangerous day ahead. That was the only game in town, and everybody was on it. As the city of El Reno, Oklahoma braces for impact, hundreds converge to witness the gathering storm. I mean, this is what we live for. Oh, my goodness. That is the biggest tornado I've ever seen. Way. But the powerful tornado catches even the most seasoned storm chasers off guard. Hold on, brothers. I was freaking out. And everybody duck down. Everybody duck down. And I remember being weightless at one point and floating. This building that was just to our south just starts exploding <laughs> into pieces. The weather community suffers a devastating loss that sparks debate about the future of the chase. He took a huge risk in this last one. He gave his life to save others. I think this was a wake-up call for a lot of people, including myself. That's crazy. Friday, May 31st, 2013, Oklahoma City. Residents are on edge as weather forecasters warn of rapidly forming thunderstorms that could produce intense tornadoes. It's kind of like you have a pot of water. You set it to boil, but exactly which point in that pot will the first bubble rise? That's what you don't know. As the storm gathers momentum, small vortices start falling from the violently rotating cell. Look at the size of that monster. A tornado touches down within minutes and expands to record-breaking proportions, forcing people on the ground to run for cover. The El Reno EF5 record width 2.6 mile wide mega wedge developed under a historic environment. And typically, if a historic environment occurs, something big is going to happen. The terrifying tornado, with wind speeds reaching 295 miles per hour, bulldozes fields for miles before making a sudden turn over the interstate, trapping motorists in their vehicles with nowhere to go. You're in the path now. Where are we going? 11 days earlier, a megastorm passed through nearby Moore, where a tornado also measuring an EF5, a top rating on the enhanced Fujita scale, spent 40 ravaging minutes on the ground, leaving death and destruction in its 16.2 mile path. While area residents have been dealing with the aftermath, storm chasers know tornado season is far from over. It just so happens that the geography and the meteorology all come together at this one place called Tornado Alley. And there's no other place like it on Earth. The University of Oklahoma is there. The Storm Prediction Center is there. The National Severe Storms Lab. It's a hotbed of meteorological activity. So when severe weather moves in, the enthusiasts come out. Some are chasing for the thrill. Right here, in the field, right next to us. Others are in it for the science. Dude, take a picture of the structure. Take a picture of the structure. You gotta get the structure, dude. And still others are there to warn the public. Confirming multi-vortex wedge, extremely dangerous. Yet they all have one thing in common. 
the desire to understand and experience one of Mother Nature's greatest enigmas, the tornado. Tornadoes are a, a big mystery because, for one thing, they're very difficult to study to get real detailed measurements. You're approaching a twisting storm. Please exercise caution. Why do some rotating thunderstorms produce tornadoes, others don't? Probably about three quarters of those rotating thunderstorms don't produce tornadoes. And on that Friday evening in El Reno, Oklahoma, these storm chasers, thrill seekers, and scientists are about to experience an unprecedented weather event. That's the most crazy multi-vortex action I've ever seen. Veteran weather scientist and tornado research pioneer Tim Samaras calls into MSNBC with a stern warning. And uh, boy, the ingredients are coming together for a pretty volatile day. Minutes later, Samaras tweets an ominous message to his fellow enthusiasts. Dangerous day ahead for Oklahoma. Stay weather savvy. Then we monitor in the vehicle. We'll take a look at it on radar. Weather Channel like meteorologist Mike Bettis and his Tornado Hunt 2013 team closely monitor the growing supercell from the road. We were really aware that day that uh, it was going to be pretty violent, and we were we were ready to respond. Looking at your colleagues at the National Weather Service, other media outlets, and the tone was different that day. At 4.45 p.m., the media start to warn residents of an imminent severe weather threat. If you live in South Oklahoma City, uh, please go below ground. And it looks like the Oklahoma City area is once again in the crosshairs. Oh, that's huge! There was extreme instability. It was very, very warm, very, very moist at low levels. And there was a cold front coming toward the area. They collided just to the west of Oklahoma City. Thunderstorms exploded, quickly began to rotate. While residents hunker down and listen for warning signals, storm chasers take to the roads. There are a lot of Americans that are thrill seekers that are looking for adrenaline rush in a variety of ways, a variety of activities. Certainly tornado chasing is one of them. It's also proven to be a very lucrative business. Meteorologists in the media pay top dollar for good storm chasing video. This day, the chasers are out in droves. First comments were, this is going to be a difficult chase day because the storms are close together. Mid-level winds are not extremely strong, so there's going to be a lot of rain pretty close to the tornadoes. Could be hard to see them at times, hard to get in between the storms at times. It's 5.30 p.m., rush hour, and the roads are jammed. The rapidly darkening sky is brewing a potentially deadly situation. The tornado is moving 35 miles per hour, and we are going three and a half. You got people leaving work, storm chasers on the roads, a lot of law enforcement on the roads, and a tornado baron right down on them. In this area that crosses it looks like a Rolling Stones concert just let out. I mean, it can be incredible, and on a two-lane road, on a storm that changes direction all of a sudden, it's a recipe for disaster. Vortices begin to form, touching down at 6.03 p.m., eight miles west of El Reno.